What's and up? What's up? Hey, guys. hey. while oh. Sean just popped up like a superhero. I mean, I am kind of amazing sometimes. <laughs> Too funny. Too funny. All right, guys. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Yep. Ate too much food, I'm gonna tell you. Santa brought everything that they uh, were expecting or didn't expect. Yeah. Have a... See, that's good. That's good. What's up, Sydney? Hey, Sid. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I see Sydney's working on yet another project. He seems to always be working on something. Sydney, <laughs> Sydney, you need some downtime, bro. I'm just saying, you need some downtime. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. So that's quickly before we. Thing. Oh God! It's so always something. Good. Go, go, right? go, go, so go! I'm here. Before <laughs> he is always. Um, so before we get too far into this, uh, just quick shout out to all the viewers. You know, I hope you guys had a great Christmas. I uh, hope you're geared up and ready to go to enter in this new year. Hopefully, COVID becomes kind of a thing of the past. Everybody, you know, becomes prosperous and all that. I mean, we don't know whether or not that's going to happen, but you know, we can hope. But the big thing is, is, you know, thank you for sticking it out with us. We love all the comments and the interaction. We've been getting some great feedback. Uh, we've got some really cool things coming up for the new year. So we're going to be dropping those here fairly soon. Um, just awesome. Awesome. You know, we really felt the love and it's great. We appreciate it. And we yep. really do pay attention to your comments. I mean, we go through the streams. We go back and look at the comments just in case we missed anything. Uh, we appreciate all you guys' patience. You know, this channel is kind of uh, developed. This rather stream is kind of developed over the last few weeks. And we like to get a lot of input from you guys to see what's pertinent and what you want to see in the next streams ahead. So thank you for that. Thank you for being patient. Yeah, thank you for everybody for joining in. So tonight we're going to be talking about myths in the in this hobby, the reef, all these different things that people do, or you hear, you get advice, and you go and do it, it doesn't work out. So we're going to be talking about all about the myths in this hobby. And so if you guys have comments, you guys want to hit us up here and ask some questions about different myths. So we're going to jump right into different stuff that's going to be going on here. Right. So real quick, uh, Duke is jumping on here, wondering when he's going to come on. Whenever you want and when you can come on without swearing. As soon as you can do those two things, you are more than welcome to come on, buddy. Duke, Duke likes to swear a little bit now and then, doesn't oh he? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a beep button? I don't think we can beep that fast, right? No, I don't. <laughs> it, it, it's really not that do it. Beep, beep. He's I, on saw, a beep. I, well, I was talking to Duke, and he was, about, he was doing his YouTube. He had to slurrily shut it down a little bit because he kept swearing too much. He's he's <laughs> generally selective with his swears, though, and, and uses them to accentuate points pretty effectively. <laughs> he, he can go a little excessive, though. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the first myth. Can, can Duke <laughs> stop swearing? <laughs> myth uh, or reality? No. That, is, that is false. He cannot. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Sydney's asking about the Bash C stuff. Yeah, I just saw that. I personally have not used it. Uh, I do have a friend that uses the skimmer and I've got a buddy that's got the reactors and they love them. And let me tell you, I've checked them out. The quality on those things. Yeah. Oh my God. Amazing. I have a, Amazing. I have a huge Bashi reactor and I'm going to tell you right now for a fact, no myth. You can drive a car over the one I have. I found out the hard way, like, holy shit. Sorry, Duke. I just did it. <laughs> I drove over. <laughs> That they, acrylic, they make quality stuff. I mean, really nice acrylic uh, detailed stuff. Yeah, they're awesome. And now uh, CK is doing their skimmer or their, their pumps for all their skimmers and everything. So you're going to get good, good pumps with those. So that's a nice CK, right? Yep. Who's making them? CK. Yeah, okay. They were making tanks at one point. I don't know if they got in and got out of that. They were making like custom stuff, and then I didn't see it. So I think they probably stopped on that front. Yeah, that's a tough market to get into. It's so yeah. saturated Every right now. Everybody's doing it now. Yeah, because my buddy had a sump made by them, and it looked awesome, like oh, engraved bashy with the shark and everything on it. It was really nice. They're not they're cheap. cheap. They're not cheap. No, nah, you get what you pay for. I told you, I they're drove in. My car backed up over that reactor, and it didn't even leave a ding in it. 
See, I'm telling you, when it comes to products, and this is where a lot of people hurt themselves, like me, when I first got into the hobby, I learned this one the hard way as well. Buy it once and buy it right. You know, buy something of a better quality. Even if it takes you a month longer to save up for it or whatnot, get what you want off the rip because it is going to save you a boatload of money. I mean, we don't even want to talk about how many lights I went through. And lights are expensive. No, I know, right? And then here's me doing some DIY on my freshwater. Well, yeah, but it's yeah, fresh. I was surprised. But you're, it, but you, that's your turn. Turned out pretty good, right? Did you see it? it turned out nice. Yeah, but you can you can I let a fresh water drink with candles. So I mean, <laughs> I would I wouldn't I wouldn't say yeah. that. I wouldn't say that. Depends on what's in the fresh water tank. Yeah, well, I'm gonna. That's agree. a myth. That's a myth right there. Does the lights matter on a freshwater tank? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, we know they do. If you're going with a planet tank and everything, yes. If it's just fish, then not no. really. But well, they are fresh water. Turned out pretty good. I'm not going to float my own boat a little bit here, but it turned you're out floating cool. your own boat. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out pretty slick. <laughs> we'll just say I had quite a few people ask where I got those lights, so that's good affiliate link right there. Uh oh, he's he's going to be selling those. So, <laughs> hey, you I'm sell the lights, I'll sell the cameras. Right. I think I'm working it's all day, maybe probably a fifty or sixty already now. Hmm. How many lights you have on that? On that? On those, each panel? Oh, what the hell are they? Um, I can tell you one minute here. I forget now. Or, uh, more than more than sixty. You got a lot of. Oh yeah, sixty on there, right? Yep. Oh, see, you stumped Ryan. So, yeah. so we can't we can't wait to see Ryan's bill. We're gonna have a whole lot of MythBusters when he gets that underway. All right, I know. All right. Yes, Eddie, we can see your comments. And live from Jamaica, man. Fish keeping. My bad black Jamaican accent. There's 70 LED, 70 LEDs per panel. Dang. That's a lot of work, man. Yeah. And you put it, oh man. It's not, it's it's good. It's ready. It's working. So nice. COVID. So what's your so what are, so where where are we gonna start the myths at? Like what end of the spectrum? Like extreme myth or or he's word of mouth myth. Could start like you know if you're getting into the hobby, the small smaller tank. You know some people say start with a small tank, but it's less water volume. But if you get a larger tank, it's easier. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sounds like a person that hasn't had that small tank long enough. Right. Okay. Small tanks are yeah. you know, small tanks are recommended for beginners and are easier to maintain. What's the, what's the smallest tank everybody in here has had? What's the smallest? I started with a 30 and i actually went smaller just to well, see if i could keep it are we talking about five or salt? salt okay so I had small, a five gallon smallest salt would be my 10 gallon i had a starter tank my smallest I I was a video on that. the smallest one i did was a uh, bubble gum machine i made a bubble gum machine yeah, I turned it into a small, like, I don't even want to call it a Pico, Nano. What does a Nano consist of, anyway? How many gallons do you think? So a Nano is anything like 45? All right. Well, this is maybe, this is smaller than a soccer ball. Okay, so then that's a Pico. Yeah. Because your Picos Pico. are generally two gallons or less. Yeah, it was a pain in the ass, not going to lie. <laughs> it was, it was, I actually, I actually, grew it really quick because it was so small i was taking water from my main tank and using that as water change water in the small tank so it was really easy to run yeah but it grew too damn fast it grew too fast and it became a nightmare exactly i think if i did it again i would just hook it up to my main display and just cycle the water through it mm -hmm. it's more of a like a showpiece you know what i mean there's not really much going on in there so yeah, well, I've small been the tank on. display fuse so, so like, I had a Hydra 32 running over top of it. I didn't even need a heater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big Hank that. says he has Big Hank says he had two 10 gallons late late nineties. Showing your age, Hank. Yeah, wow. Late nine actually, yeah. I had the 30 gallon in 1999. 99. <laughs> Dave makes a valid point there, though, because he just said that he had a 14 gallon that was easy with the softies, but a pain with the XPS. So, yeah. oh, for sure. 
With that, yeah. I mean, I had my 10 gallon for all of like three weeks and broke my boss's desk and his little tank. And so I gave him my 10 and I went out and bought a 20. And then that was, the 20 was what I ran for my first year. And it was all softies and it was still kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. So yeah, I can, I can definitely relate. I mean, I'm still struggling a little bit with SPS. I'm finally getting it dialed in and learning how to take care of my tanks better. But, uh, yeah, no, I couldn't imagine that on a 14 gallon. Yeah. Well, this so we 20 is a pain in the ass. I mean, I had SPS that grew and then fought other coral and I just did it just to say, Hey, I could do it and make it all in one, but it's beautiful for like a year. And then Pavona decided that it was going to grow over everything. <laughs> so it, it became the beautiful success nightmare. Yep. So we'd say that it's a myth or a fact. For that what, a for smaller limit? tank is easier. Yeah. Well, that's a definite <laughs> myth. Yeah. yeah. Totally a myth. Like there is no way, no way. I mean, would you recommend would you recommend that a person getting into the hobby? What's the smallest tank that you could recommend they uh, get? Whatever the biggest is for their space. Yeah, I'd say a forty breeder or something to start off the bigger. Yeah, yeah. because you, you, you know a forty is a good size. You can do a lot with it. You can do a twenty if you're yeah. willing to be diligent enough to do basically daily water changes. I mean, I was doing like a three quarter gallon daily water change on that thing. Not even yeah. daily. If I told you I change water on this tank once a month, when I had SPS in it, twice a month, every two weeks. Wow. It just, once, it, once it stabilizes and you're dosing on a regular, I was dosing two part, uh, five mils per dosage. Yeah. If you're in a regular routine, it's good. It's the corals that made it a nightmare. The corals I mean, literally outgrew the tank. But I mean, if we're talking like a true, true beginner that doesn't know anything about dosing, doesn't want to do the dosing and all that stuff, just wants one, like you've got to do so many water changes on something. Yeah, that's 40 cool. breeder, I would say, for me, yeah. no smaller than that. And, then, and, and if you get the 40, you could always turn it into a quarantine tank later. If they go yeah, in. Well, you know, the beautiful thing about a 40 breeder is you can fit a 20 gallon under it and that's extra water volume. Now you got 60 gallons of water volume. Yeah. yeah and then you can throw in all the better filtration stuff and everything instead of doing like a hang on the back skimmer or having to worry about drilling it too much extra or anything. I mean, like there's so many variables that come into that though. It's not even funny. I hate hang on the backs. So I had nightmares of hang on the back skimmers. <laughs> I was around when we had, I had the CPR backpack, I had Red Sea, both of them ended up with water on the floor. <laughs> one set off my smoke alarm. Yep. I never had a problem with mine. I had one of the Reef Octopus ones on my Fluval 90 or whatever, which was really only like a 30 gallon tank. I don't remember what it says it was, but um, I had one on it, never had any problems. Did it have an overflow uh, valve on it? Mm -mm. I had that thing just, water just came right through the top. Like you see when your skimmer has that fuzz come through the holes and it was running down the back of the tank, went right onto the outlet. I had the fire department. Luckily I had ADT. I was like, why am my alarm going off at three in the morning? The guy's like, nice tank. <laughs> as he's swinging a hatchet over it. You definitely looked out there. <laughs> so as, as, so as a new beginner, should you always trust your local fish store? God, no. Oh, oh. Yes and no. Well, it depends you on gotta, the You got to research your store. And you always hear like Petco. You hear Petco all the time because you guys have that in the States, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like when I go to my store and I see somebody that's new there, like I've gone there for years and he tries to like start telling me what I should do and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, whoa. <laughs> but I'm thinking if there was a new beginner that came in here and he was telling him that, I would have been like really shocked. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I mean, I think that when it comes to the local fish stores, yeah, take everything they say with a grain of salt. You know, take it as a as a good starting point. Hey, this is what I should look into. You know, like how do you get rid of Aptasia? And then everybody's like, oh, you need some of this here. Use some Aptasia X or some F Aptasia or something, or you can use lemon juice or whatever. And you're like, all right, cool. But then go and do some research, and then you're like, oh man, 
I don't have any wrasses. I can get nudies. What? Let me get these and put those in there. And then I don't have to worry about them spreading. I've got something to control it. Like it's a natural approach. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying like, you got to do your research. That's a big thing. Well, depends on too. It depends on the store because like, like Ryan says, if it's a big box store, yeah. you're as good as the workers that you have there. Like I, I actually, we were talking about nano fish and things like that last week. And I, Went to my local store and I saw somebody buying a whole bunch of freaking peacock gudgeons, which are really rare to see in a big box store. And the guy didn't know what he was. And he was like, oh, what are these? So the fact that he didn't know what he was raised off the flag. So he's telling him about the fish and how big they would get. And then he's asking me questions like, you know, what would you feed it? And the lady, after he left, he was like, yo, you really gave that guy too much information. I was like, well would you like him to kill a $15 fish? <laughs> like 10 of those for freshwater people is expensive, like $15 fish for fresh. That's only an inch big, you know, but she was kind of upset that I was helping the guy. And I was like, well, yeah. you want him to live, right? Um, yeah. Would you rather he have a good experience or a bad experience? Oh, well, exactly. I think I've done the same thing in the store. He was selling the guy a fish. I'm like, you definitely don't, that's not a community fish. You definitely don't want to put that in there. You know what I mean? My point with the local fish store thing is, is like, um, you've got high phosphates, right? And you go to a, an LFS and they're like, oh, you should just run some GFO. But then they don't tell you anymore. No. They don't tell you that if you run too much, you're going to strip everything out. And then, you know, you're worrying about dinos and cyano and throwing everything off balance and just really like wrecking your tank. Like they don't tell you that stuff. Yes, they give you the remedy. But then they don't give you any of the expanded information as far as you know proper usage and what to look out for and they don't say oh but you should probably buy these test kits along with it so you can monitor it better you know, they they fail in the upsell and they fail in the education generally now that's not always the case um i've got an lfs here that when i first started the dude was absolutely amazing so quick little shout out to robert plan and Paul. Um, I, anytime I had an issue there, I would just go and I'd talk to him and he'd kind of point me in the right direction. But then I did the responsible thing and I went and researched stuff. So yeah, I mean, he was spot on every time, but most times that's not the case. <laughs> so we got here, Duke of Corals. Well, that's a D, sorry. The he Duke of off. Corals. Yeah, he's I like- I like your name, Duke. The Duke a, file, a file fish or copper band will remove all your aptasia from your system. Absolutely, one hundred percent true. Until they grow back, <laughs> until they die, <laughs> or they no. nip on your pallies. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is the way that they eat them. So, like nudies being nocturnal, wait till the aptasia actually closes up at night and consume the entirety of the aptasia. Whereas filefish and coppermans, they they kind of pick at it and tear it apart, and it just releases more of them in the water. So you'll get rid of the stuff you can see, but the aptasia is going to continue to grow back. I did have a good experience with the file fish the second time. The first time I bought Aptasia uh, eating file fish and it swam past the Aptasia like a road sign on I-95. It didn't even pay it any mind. And and I was so peeved. I spent so much money on the fish and then it died because it wasn't eaten. So I went to the local fish store and I got another one that was way smaller actually. And he ate every Aptasia in the tank. And I was like, you know, you can, kind of not gamble on what a fish is supposed to do i think it's a hit and miss sometimes if you can yeah. get a copper band to eat period shake your hand <laughs> they're right. hard i mean it depends on where you get them from they're hard to uh acclimate to captive uh tanks you know what they will eat though the um uh mastic mastic the, yep the they stick on the glass them. mastic yep yeah, that's a, I, I've seen so many videos of them eating it and so many people that have been like, I couldn't get it to eat. It was having trouble in my tank. And then I started using this and it's like, it's pretty impressive. So I guess that's the way to keep them now. The only thing that sucks about it is that food's expensive. Well, do they have more than one type of mastic? Because I don't see it locally. I have to order it. I've seen nobody that carries it locally by me. Yeah, most places don't carry it just because, I mean, it is a little pricey. So you tend to have to order it. Let's see, so many comments and stuff coming through here. Yeah, if you guys are seeing the lag, it's because I'm reading all you guys' comments <laughs> and some good stuff we got here. Ev Who's talking about like quizzing everybody on tank information? Robert Poorman. 
Yep. There should be a quiz. You probably studied already. You're probably cheating, Rob, already. No, he's saying that for people to work at an LFS, they should have to have a test to have their knowledge checked. Yeah, but they get so low pay that you're not going to keep the best people yeah. at the local level LFS unless they do installs. Like I noticed the stores that do in-home installs tend to keep better people because they make their money on the side. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I got another one here. A large protein skimmer or filtration system will eliminate all need of water changes. Uh, definitely going to go with false on that one. Um, because there's still other things that will build up in the water that the protein skimmer can't get. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Fun fact about protein skimmers, and most people don't know this. Yeah, everybody always says, go a step bigger than what you need. Okay, that's great. But you can, in fact, over skim your water. Oh, yeah. It gets too damn clean. That's why yeah. I had to start shutting mine down at night. Have you seen some of the pictures I posted? I swear to God, it's taken everything out of the tank. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, they, and that stuff can stink. Oh, my family hates me when I uh, empty that one. Mm -hmm. So there, there's somebody that keeps asking about whether or not they can watch on YouTube. Uh, yes, you can. You can watch on deep yeah. look on the page. I dropped the link there. Page. Um, and you know, we we've got everybody that's watching. I mean, the next question was where is everybody watching? We've got people watching on all the different platforms. So yeah. everywhere, YouTube, yeah. Facebook. Oh, and we have and we have to say it since we mentioned it. If you're on Facebook, make sure that you've given StreamYard permission when you log on to show your name or it just says Facebook user and we won't know who you yeah. are. So I'm gonna I see somebody with Facebook user, so we don't yeah. know who you are, just a FYI. Yeah, so you can go over onto YouTube if they can't see it. I don't know. Now, since Robert, Mr. Poorman, brought up Tank Jeopardy on nitrates, I'm going to throw a random question in there. Oh, for 500? Nitrates, nitrates for 500 for everybody. Canister filters generate nitrates in a tank. True or false? What do you think? What's the tally? I haven't really used one before. I would say yes a bit. I mean, common sense would dictate yes. Yeah. Especially if it's getting built up and stuff decaying in there i'll Depends. take that answer yes <laughs> <laughs> the, the question is though d how often is it being cleaned well studies <laughs> have studies have shown uh sean <laughs> studies have shown sean that but the that lack of oxygen exchange in the canister filter leads to a variant in the nitrate cycle which generates more nitrates than in a sump where it is exposed to air Whoa, well, Mr. Professor. <laughs> what you're saying is if you're struggling with nitrates, yeah, it you makes know, sense. Just go buy a canister filter and hook that up and just let it run. Well, I've, I've tried to run a canister filter and have it empty into the sump, figuring that maybe it would dissipate. But I couldn't, I couldn't see any benefit other than polishing the water to run in a canister filter. Or actually, you can run a canister filter just to run carbon. People use reactors, but a reactor is nothing but a canister filter. Yeah. Robert Porman says, false. Nitrifying bacteria creates nitrates. <laughs> and thus, <nitrate>. <laughs> <laughs> This one's good. This one's good. True or false, Angelo's eats fish tongues. <laughs> Eat fish tongues? Yeah, I know Phil indeed. They're good guys. Do fish have tongues? <laughs> <laughs> does a fish have a tongue? Yes. It fish does? Have yes. I don't know. There's a lot of different types of fish. Parasite where it eats the one fish's tongue and everything. Have you never gone fishing? Like, yes. Is that, is that a is that a tongue? Is that a tongue? Technically. Ah. Uh, just because they're not sticking it out doesn't mean it's not a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> the day I see a fish stick his tongue out at me, I throw him back. He won. Right? Here's a good one. You don't need a heater if your house is warm enough. Uh, I have tanks with no heater. Yeah. But, but it depends on what temperature you're trying to hold. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, when your lighting comes on, it's going to, you know, raise the temperature on your heat. But when it goes off at night... It's gonna your tank's gonna cool, so you you should have a heater to come. You know what I mean to bring things back up, but to keep it consistent too. 
All right, D, <clears throat> sorry, just to go back to the fish tongue thing. Yeah, fish do have tongues. It is bony and not muscular. Lies on the floor of the mouth and is primarily known as like Bashil, Bashial. I'm not even sure. Bashial, Bashil, Bashil, Bashil. There's even fish that have teeth on their tongues to help them hold onto their prey. <laughs> now that I've seen. <laughs> that I've seen. <laughs> So you know fish have tongues. <laughs> no, but I didn't consider that like the tongue. Like they grab the like like we have fish in our tanks. Some fish will grab the food and suck it in and spit it back out, like to crush it up. Or if you have bigger fish like Oscars and you feel <laughs> around the gills, like all of the all of the soft, so there's nothing on it. Eh. My buddy Phil just texted me. He's like, Yeah, here's a whole frozen bag of cod tongues. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Phil, where the hell did you get cod tongue from? They is on the they frozen ones. I'm good. I'm good. Where the hell do you <laughs> those poor cod? <laughs> He's like, that's what he made. As that's if filleting wasn't mean. bad enough. He's got to cut the tongues out. Yes, Eddie, we are seeing your messages. Um, that's disgusting. Uh, to go back to the heater thing, kind of. I would say yes. It's more well, than one. So you can, but you're going to have some pretty extreme temperature swings. And, you know, if you're trying to maintain 78, like most people do for their reef tanks, you're not going to maintain that at night. And who's going to keep their house at 78? I don't know about y'all, but 78 for me, sweltering. I'm dying. My wife used to do that when we first bought the house until she got the heating bill. <laughs> and that was then that. But I think... It, I... So it, it's kind of both. Like, it's geographically dependent. It depends on your tank's needs. I, I mean, yes and no. Like, there isn't really a right or wrong answer on that one because there's too many variables. You, you It's situational. Well, like the temperature, say temperature of the ocean, it gets hotter than 78 degrees in the water, right? Up well, it depends it, on the fish you're keeping because oh, I keep oh, white clouds. White clouds I've had outside in 40-degree water. So the tanks that I yeah. keep them in inside, I don't heat them. I keep them in unheated tanks. So 70 degrees for a fish that can be outside in 40 degrees is nothing. Mm -hmm. So it definitely so, depends on the tank. But that's what I'm saying. Like It's situational. It depends. Steve has a good question, though, about this whole running your airline, uh, your skimmer. Um, yes. If you're pulling in outside air, if you're just having like an air pump or having it pull from inside the room, it's not making a lick of difference. So yeah. as long as you're pulling clean air or air through a scrubber, then absolutely. Yeah. And then yeah, when, you're running, when you're running airlines outside too, always be careful of where you're running it. If there's exhaust, someone spraying pesticides, all that kind of stuff, you can get sucked right into your skimmer and into your tank. So, so a lot of time I would say, you know, put an outside filter on that or something. You know what I mean? A carbon filter. Absolutely. <laughs> I ran it outside and I... I ran it outside where my AC, I have a wall mounted AC. So yep. I had it run outside where the AC ran. And I didn't see too much of a difference. There was a slight difference at night, but it also brought in cold air. <laughs> like I felt that line. I didn't contemplate that airline being outside, bringing in whatever's outside, like Ryan said. What if somebody's smoking outside or like a car idling? Yep. You know, you get that in the airline. Mowing their lawn. Someone mowing their lawn right by your house. Yeah. Uh, David jumped on and said hi. What's up, David? Hey, nice David. The Australian boy. Mm -hmm. Check out his stuff. He, he's got some awesome, awesome stuff in the works right now. I'm excited to see his lighting when he finally finishes it and releases that. That tank's Where's pretty it? deep, too. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking the deep tank, even though I'm a short guy. Hmm. 12 foot lagoon. That's my next tank. I'm telling you. 12. Already made my mind. 12 foot lagoon and like 80 tangs in that thing, just constantly swimming circles. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, I like, a pond. like it went in the ground so that fish can go down and come up if you had sharks and stuff. Stop giving me yeah, ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to put half my tank outside and have it plumbed in and everything. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Uh, my small tank here only comes on in the winter. I do have five pumps running too. Cool, Matt. I was going to run the pumps. I actually removed my pumps only because in the winter I get ice on the top and I actually saw it 
beat up the impellers, that plastic contracting, and, and I was losing pumps. Mm -hmm. So I just disconnect them. So Eddie keeps saying, are you getting our messages? What was your question, Eddie? I don't know. Yeah. Eddie, I didn't see it. He keeps saying, are you getting our messages? It's the only one I see over and over. Oh, oh, here we go. You got, uh, got a 170 red. Three. Good, but everything, everything grow. Oh, that was for the small tank. Well, that's what I was saying earlier, Eddie. I had a, I still run it, but if people, there was one comment in a few shows back. He says, D knows how to grow a, what was it, Kenya tree? I was like, yeah, because I made the mistake of moving one Kenya tree into the nano and it dropped babies like everywhere. <laughs> they were on my chalice. They were on the floor. They were on the glass. So I pulled all of the, Kenya trees out. And I do that with all my tanks. I after after a few months, like you have tanks that are really old and especially SPS people, you do either a lot of fragging or you'll do like some other people do and you'll break it down after a few months and you'll sell it and start new rocks, but coral can grow over everything if they get hostile. Especially what is it? Uh green slimers, <laughs> green slimers, pavona if you do GSP, definitely do it on a separate rock. Yeah. How long is a commercial? <laughs> okay. Uh, true. Here's one for from Duke right here. Myth: Acropora are hard to keep. It's not that they are hard to harder to keep. You just need to be more diligent and aware of what's going on in your tank. What do you guys? Um, it helps for you guys that have the Dostronic, Alcatronics, you know, the automatic so testers. Those are a blessing if you're going to keep <laughs> coral like that because it makes your life easier. D, yeah. you keep it simple, buddy. I keep it simple. That's why certain corals I I'm don't not jumping keep. On you though. I'm not jumping on. No, certain corals I don't keep because you got to be realistic in what you can keep. So we have like five of these things backing up. But yes, uh, I'd say that's true and false. If you're really good, have good husbandry and everything, then no. No coral is really any harder than any other coral, except for non-photosynthetic corals, because those you actually have to feed. Um, non-photosynthetic uh, fans, things like sea fans. No. Sorry, Ron. go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, I think like with Acropora and stuff, it's, you know, it's being consistent with your water parameters. Yep. Okay, so QTing. Uh, I don't. I need to. There is just a question asking whether or not we do QTing. Um, I don't on this tank right now. Uh, I've got some money tied up in the fish. Don't get me wrong, but if they die, I mean, they die. But I buy from a, somebody that I trust, and he kind of pre-treats and everything. So I don't really right now. But <clears throat> after I complete my move, promise you, everything is getting QT'd. I'm going to tell a big fat truth. I quarantined for like a few months and then I used the tank for something else <laughs> because, because the God's honest truth is you start off with a quarantine tank and it becomes another tank because you get tired of seeing the empty tank. So then I moved fish into it and I was like, man, I can't put this fish back into my main tank, but I don't want to get rid of the fish. And it became another tank. Mm -hmm. We have got to work on something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like here, we're gonna play this. It just Try it. It just comes. It's it's it just happens. And now a cool. word from our sponsors. <laughs> and then it click, that, click click that. <laughs> Click that subscribe, click that like button, people. If you're not already a subscriber, check out all the channels. Beeves Reef, Farm Boy Reef, D from Brooklyn. Check them out. Yep, Harmless plug. It. it keeps us doing fun, making fun content for you guys. Definitely, well, one definitely. thing, go go to the go to the Facebook pages and leave your comments. That's the main thing. I like to see we put out the um, 
Q&A, we always put out like a question of the week or a poll to see what guys are doing, what gals are doing, what everybody's doing. And that gives us ideas for the next week's topic. We don't just take other people's content and run with it. We try to be as original as possible. And you, the user, help us do that. Those are some really straight facts here, buddy. Those are facts and not myths. Spitting fire. <laughs> fire. Okay. Okay. So let's get let's get back to some of these questions. Yeah, there's um, here. We're, They're falling up. We're kind of steering away from our show here, guys, by answering all your questions. But you know what? We're here for you, so I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna one, right. There's how long should your lights be on for corals? Uh, the general rule of thumb: twelve hours. You know, anywhere between an hour to two hour ramp up, hour to two hour ramp down, and like three to five hours max intensity. I mean, that's the easiest way to answer it. That's pretty much what the general standard is. Um, sorry, I know I'm just ripping through these. Uh, how high do you want your lagoon? I'm thinking 18 to 20 inches. I don't want to go too tall or too small. Agree. And I don't count my ramp time in my lighting period. Just the FY. That's just my personal. Like I don't count my ramp up time in the lighting period. So, I mean, I guess at that rate, then you run an eight hour photo period, you know, yeah. but it, but it still boils down to being roughly like that 12 hours. Like you just kind of said it in that time period there. Um, sorry, just trying to burn through some of these. We've got a bunch. Here's one from question. True or false nutrient stability is the best part of reef keeping. <laughs> um, best part of it? up, until, up until recently, we it's, it's like the hobby every, every now and then, something becomes the new focal point at one time it was phosphate one time it was iron for a while and then it was iodine we don't even talk about iodine anymore or calc but, and ph that's all the big talk now yeah calc washer ph it's all part of the cycle everything yep. is a balance it's the, it's the trend that's going on right now yeah so, I mean, but it's kind of true now because everybody's worried about growing out their corals. You know, we've yeah. got alkalinity dialed in, so we have rate of growth done. Now, nutrients are a big part because everybody wants to know how to properly color up and what they need to maintain to get their corals to be as colorful as possible. But can you measure nutrients? Well, I can I mean, measure phosphate. I can measure nitrate. So Is there a nutrient test? Product plug, um, you know, nutrients people are generally referring to nitrogen, for that one, right? This is so, plug night. <laughs> right. So yes, I mean, people tend to focus on um, you know phosphates and nitrates and everything as far as coloration goes and whatnot. Um, that is kind of the big focus there, but we don't really look at nutrient stuff. However, after doing some research today, I did find out that the Mastertronic is coming out with a new test that they've specifically developed that's going to tell you your organic matter compounds in your water and tell you whether or not you should be running carbon. Damn. So oh, it's another thing to kind of keep looking at, kind of answering that at the same time. You know, if you're running too high of those nutrient type things in your water, then obviously you need to remove that stuff. So the cool thing about the Mastertronic is it's going to let you know that you should be running some carbon to get rid of some of that. Because it's stuff we don't test for. Yep. Well, I run carbon just to clarify my water on top of yeah. removing uh, chemical properties, or because it's in the dining room, people are in the room, and you know, just air, air freshener, anything that we don't foresee getting in the tank. Yep. Yeah. Any chemicals that you know the corals give off, it's that chemical warfare too, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to keep different species yeah. of coral. And a lot of these corals aren't even from the same part of the ocean, and they never see each other. That's yep. true too. Coral yeah, warfare yeah. has killed me a few times. Coral warfare happens, right? So that's one reason why especially I if you keep, Especially if you keep leather corals and exactly. things like that that tend to release their slime into the water. Yep. Uh, yeah. Here, here's a good one from the real uh, man who wears pink. That is, a, that is absolutely 100% true. That, <laughs> but it's, it is all pink. All tangs are kind of ick magnets, but it's because they have a thinner slime coat than most other fish. Yeah. Now, I wonder if the aquaculture tangs have the same issue as like the wild ones. That would be a good question for the breeders out there in Hawaii. I wish I could get that. I, I was, was going to say the problem is, Dean, nobody knows yet because we're just that's, now finding captive bread. That's, that's the problem. And I wonder if they can ship. I know we got a, the lockdown on the exports from Hawaii, but does that include the captive bread? I'm not sure. I guess time will tell on that one. We should, yeah. We, 
But those in. tangs, yeah. man, those tangs are so temperamental. You don't know. I think it's it's probably a good practice to have that tang at the store that you get it from for a while before you take it, or yeah. take it straight before they release it into the uh, store, which is kind of devil's advocate. Well, or, well, now with COVID, a lot of time, here we go again, you know, curbside pickup. So you're buying things online, you know, A, they could say it's being quarantined. How do you know, right? Yeah. This, and this one here, I read this one. Uh, this myth, it could be transferred through the air from one tank to another. From one tank to another? No. <laughs> what is this, the walking dead for fish? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it can come off your nets or, you know, when you're putting corals in your tanks or different fish. It can be but that's, that's true. That's, that's water true, though. though. That's What's water. That? That's water transfer. That's not through the air. Yeah, no, but you can get you can get the what is it those what is it sifts into the net. Not even the water. Like if you use a net in the tank regular enough, I've the bought stuff from outside in the pond that I didn't even know was in the net, and all of a sudden I had snails inside. And I was like, how the hell did this? Like anything, because they release gametes into the water when they spawn. And wait for the eggs to stick to stuff. If you have a net in there, you can't see it. So I would imagine parasite or anything else in the water, protozoa. Yep. Okay. So take another comment before I throw something else up here. Uh, UV state. Actually, we can burn through a lot of these. UV yeah. sterilization just kill a couple of pods. Uh, false no. and true. That's false and true. So, so according to Chad, depending on the flow rate, right? Yes, it, it depends on flow rate, depends on the size of UV. Also, it's different life stages. Like a full on adult copepod, it's not going to kill it. But like the little baby ones and stuff, it potentially could, depending on how long they're in there and the intensity. So, yes and no. I guess that's the easiest way to answer that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, technically, us. I mean, you leave us in UV long enough, it'll kill us too. Well, I think a good practice too is to run your UV away from your refugium or before your refugium <laughs> if you want to save your copepods if you're growing them in a refugium yeah i mean it's not going to kill them at a significant rate that it's really going to matter so it's kind of a negligible point there um yeah, I don't, I don't have my uv 24 7 and i have no issue well chad said that they they uh, can they should be a, there. what if the you know what do you call that call a friend there hotline a friend. <laughs> Taking this QA to a whole new level. Yeah, Oob Tube Reefer Mastertronic seems a little overkill. No, Mastertronic seems <laughs> perfect. You sound like you sound like a YouTuber, but I am not against Mastertronic. I think that the more you can make your job easier, the better you're gonna do. Some people don't have the discipline to <laughs> test or dose at the rate that other people do so they buy the equipment needed to make the job easier yep here's a here's a good one from robert again a fact or myth uh, marine ph buffer is a good way to maintain a stable ph i say no i, th I think it's false i don't think it's good to do that at all chase I think uh, too many swings mm -hmm. i've actually had it do the opposite op absolute opposite because it now you end up with a gigantic alkalinity swing which i just went through because i was using the buffer and the two part and and what's the point in doing that? What's the point of a buffer if you don't know what it is? Well, and even that, a buffer is designed to help deal with drops and stuff. It's not designed for long-term maintaining. Then you raise your dosage. So the buffer, supposedly yep. helping the calcification cycle, actually cripples your dosing process. Mm -hmm. uh, best to get a bigger tank? Absolutely. Get as big as you can get. Here's one from Duke. Myth: Salt water is expensive. Yes or no? You can have a nice tank with a lower end equipment, and the high end equipment is no more expensive than the other hobby. <laughs> I think it's a myth. I think it's an absolute myth. I have tanks running with controllers. I have a tank running with just an AquaClear. Both of them have coral in them. So, do they run the same way? No. And I keep the same thing in both of them. No. But you can't get a minimal tank and expect maximum expectations out of it. If I can try to put that the easiest way. I think people try to get by with the simplest equipment that they can get, but then they want an acro, <laughs> you know, or they want a, a chalice. And they're like, wow, I keep killing these things. So 
saltwater, I would say, is definitely more expensive. But look at it from a fundamental standpoint. Okay, just your water cost alone. Instead of being able to just use a dechlorinator and be like, oh, cool, it's water change. Now it's you've got to do RODI. You've got to add your salt. And that just on the basis of itself is way more expensive. But then look at something even simpler. Look at just your fish. I mean, what's a cheap clown cost? Anywhere between 30 and 70 bucks? Yeah, that's true. Four fish for freshwater people. And the yellow tangs have gone through the roof. They're getting oh my expensive. god! This is true. Even demsels have gotten expensive. I remember when demsels were like three dollars. I saw demsels like fifteen bucks now. Yeah. So all of this export import uh, freeze. So yes, yeah, salt water is expensive in that point. There are ways to control the cost, but if you're going to compare it to running uh two tanks of the same size, uh, a forty gallon breeder fresh and a forty gallon breeder salt, yeah, the salt you're going to spend money because you got to buy salt. Mm -hmm. In itself, just your water changes, like Sean said. So I mean, but realistically, it's it's pretty comparative depending on what you want to do. Yeah. Like I've got a really nice, cute little six gallon freshwater tank, and I'm maybe I don't know, like four hundred bucks into it, give or take yeah. four five hundred bucks. Uh, I've got forty plus thousand dollars in saltwater equipment. So I mean, it, I, I don't know. Like it, it's a tough one, but I've got friends that have massive freshwater tanks with super rare plants and all the CO2 dosing stuff and different monitoring stuff and everything. And they've got basically into it what I have into my salt water. Yep. So it, it can be the same. It just depends on how you do it. I think it's, it's how you can make it. it if, you know, the size definitely makes a difference, right? Say the guy goes and buys a 40 breeder, puts some sand in it, gets a pail of, you know, some salt. Some fish, you're not looking too too expensive. But in the fish in themselves, the fish are expensive. I can get 40, yeah, uh, 40 how many Daniels at like two dollars a piece. I can't get a two dollar fish that I know yeah. of for salt water. But it's a although, 40 can, although no, you can get mollies, you can get mollies and put them in a salt water environment, but then what's the point of having a salt water tank? Yeah, but salt water fish in it. he's not gonna put like you know 10 tangs in there and all kinds of stuff, you know what I mean. Tank a place you can put a few chromies in there, some smaller fish, a clown, some shrimp. They still have a pretty cool tank. So no limit makes a valid point about the potential of there being ick with captive bred fish because he's talking about how they still use the ocean water in the breeding facilities. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I could see that. I don't. I cannot verify whether or not that's true. I don't know, but I, I would assume that that's true. But we weren't talking about whether or not they can have ick we were talking about whether or not tangs are ick magnets and so you know again to answer that one yes because they have a thinner slime coat but then that brings up the question of do the captive bred ones have a different amount on their slime or coat? a different immunity because they're captive bred phil's got a question anybody know why brs didn't have any boxing day sales today I, don't I think because they already gave everything away. <laughs> yeah, they did like 30. What did they do? 28 days of yeah. gifts or something like that. So not quite sure, Phil. Go um, in their live show and ask them. <laughs> right? They'll love that if they answer. Paul's got one here. What is the best first fish? Clowns? You can go with clowns. Clowns are, are pretty durable now because we pretty much captive breed more than 50% of the clowns that you see. I mm -hmm. mean, the wild caught fish aren't as widely spread as they used to be. So these guys are tough. They're pretty hardy, too. Um, Chromus, man. Chromus die. People I have always more Chromus than clowns. Yeah, I and mean, people always start with the damselfish. And then they become the devil later. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't lying. Um, I don't know. See, I can't answer that one because there are a lot of fish that are really hardy that aren't clowns. That are six line rats. I think he would eat a nail if I put it in there. Yeah, <laughs> six I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of really hardy fish. So I guess the best fish to start with would be one that you like, one that you can afford, and one that's hardy. As yep. long as it's in those three categories, then I mean, hey, go for it. Like, there isn't really a right or wrong answer there. Um, you just got to make sure that you can feed it. Like, don't be like, oh, I want to go out and go get a copper band and throw it into a brand new tank where there's nothing very deep. Yeah, or, exactly. You know, yeah. you gotta look out for the animal first. Yeah, please, people. When you think, when you say hardy fish, 
Don't go out there half cocked, not knowing anything about salt water, and then ask the person, "What's your hardiest fish?" Try to like, like I do hear that in a fish store too, and it kind of, it makes me angry personally inside because it's like you're dooming the fish to, to death, no matter what you get. Try to research as much as you can before getting any fish, not just the hobby salt water itself, but the fish. Like, know what it eats, know how big it's gonna get. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, uh, cycling a new tank. Fish cycle or fishless cycle? Well, it's not really a myth. <laughs> that's, that's a matter of preference. You yeah. can do it both ways. It just depends on where and how you want to struggle. Like, yeah. Really, it is at the end of the day. And some people think it's cruel to do it. Yeah, you know. To a fish cycle? Yeah. I think, I think the people need to change their view on that a little bit. If yeah. you're just eating a fish and it's brand new fresh water and you're throwing some clowns and some chromas in there, by all means, yes, that is absolutely cool because the ammonia is going to get up so high. But let's be realistic with the advancements of, you know, Microbacter 7 and Fritz Turbo Start and all that. If you take that stuff and you're throwing it in with the fishes, um, it, it's not likely to really do anything. I mean, they might see a little bit more ammonia than they normally would, but you're not likely to really see anything because the bacteria quantity to, is there to handle the ammonia production that they're making. So you're not really raising it. But so, you really don't know if it works until the fish lives or dies. <laughs> to tell you the truth. I mean, I mean, not knocking the uh, fishless cycle. I've tried a lot of different products, and I never feel personally whether I believe 100% that the bacteria I added did it or if the fish did it. Yeah. Like, how do you really, I, I know the science is out there, but I don't really know whether I can without a doubt say this product definitely did this. I mean, I can see that point, yeah. but you can, you can tell a difference, like if you do comparative tanks, so say you had one of the Encore tanks where you had two 10-gallon tanks, right? You do one fish with the bacteria, one fish without the bacteria, you're going to see noticeable differences in the ammonia levels. Yeah. So you can tell it's working, but yeah, it, I guess it does kind of leave up to speculation as to how well it's working. So we hear that this, we were just talking about this fish grow the size of your tank. <laughs> we were just talking about that. Yeah. Well, the research I did for it is like, yes, it will sort of grow the size of your tank, but the fish has an enzyme in its body that still says uh, it still wants to grow. So it actually hurts the internals of the fish. So it, it makes a sick fish, sick fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it can hurt the fish in the long run. Then when they say, yes, it will just grow to the size of your tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I grew to the size of my house. Now I need a bigger house. <laughs> Literally, we New Yorkers struggle with this. Tell me about it. I got so much fish stuff this last year. I have no more room anywhere. It's disgusting. My garage used to be able to park a car in it. Not so much now. I have a walkway. It's like Costco in your garage. Yeah, it is. Literally, <laughs> it's like Costco. <laughs> fish stuff, though. It really is. What hobbyist doesn't have a ton of stuff? I have reactor that I'm looking at in a box. I didn't even take it out yet. I have stuff I didn't even take out yet. But but that's the nature of the hobby, you know. I've got so much. It's disgusting. Uh, Dave's talking about a blue velvet. Yes, I just got rid of a green damsel myself. It took the long walk to the freezer. Please don't call PETA on me. <laughs> it took a walk to the freezer. <laughs> That thing deserved it. I watched it kill a yellow tang. So, yeah. I, sorry, I didn't watch it, but I saw the aftermath after it killed a yellow tang, and I had somebody actually watching it. So I, I'd rather it, flush it in the there. toilet than put it in a freezer. See, that's cruel. You put, you put it down the toilet, and it's in fresh water, and it's having trouble breathing, and then it's exposed to all that nasty stuff. I mean, would you didn't really want to get something to that? I mean, didn't no. You see, didn't you see Finding Nemo? All toilets lead to the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maybe in Australia. Um, but no. Uh, so the, the humane way to kill a fish is to put it into a freezer. Because they're cold-blooded and everything, it lowers the water temperature and slows down everything that they're doing. And they just kind of like fall asleep. You know, you know they don't. I'll give you a fishing fact. You know they don't die, right? When you I, go, I, I, go, I go ice fishing. So I'll tell you for a fact, I've caught fish in the ice 
drop them on the ice, had them freeze absolutely solid, bring them home, and have them start flipping again. Scared the, pants off, like scared the pants off of me. So that changed my whole outlook on the freezer method because I, I, they were ap – my fish outside right now, I have had them out there last year frozen solid. In the spring, they came right out, and I had the fish yeah. brought them inside. <laughs> so I know they weren't dead. They were in the ice. Yeah. I've had the same thing. I had a, I, I built a pond, and there was a little bit. There was mud in the bottom of the pond, and I didn't take them out. It froze solid. I couldn't froze. believe it. Yeah, I dug it up. They were in there. I was digging out with my hand out of the mud. And like, Why? Hey, that's awesome. And it's they want. Awesome. And they want to go to Mars. I'm telling you. <laughs> they are. They did bring fish into space, didn't they? Yeah. Probably. Here's a, here's one. You should try caring for a freshwater tank before a saltwater tank if you really want to be successful. True. I, I I wouldn't agree on that. You would. I I would. I would at first, but but now I wouldn't only because I think the discipline is a little different. I think if you start out in the salt water and and get that discipline from day one, like we don't do a lot of water changes as much in the freshwater hobby. <laughs> so you get really spoiled. Was that thirty? That? Lazy tank. I've started because I bought these discus, and I've realized what a pain in the neck it is changing. The, but but using the water, you can you can get by without doing as many. But I got bad habits because I started in the fresh water. The I I joke around and say that you should go fresh before going salt. Um, realistically, it doesn't matter. You, you know, it's just a matter of picking your struggle. Do your homework. Um, However, I, I do suggest for a lot of people that are wanting to get into it, get a smaller tank, get like a two or a three gallon tank, get a damn beta and see if you can keep it alive for like six That's months. True. Then worry about getting into it. That's true. It's because you don't want to jump into a hobby like salt water, drop all the money, drop all the time and find out you really don't like fish. <laughs> you, you just dropped a, a grand and you really don't like them. You always jump 100% in. You do. <laughs> That's the only way I roll, though. If I'm going to do something, he rolls. He rolls Hulk, boy. Okay, so Mithervag DSB is a bad thing. Um, Robert, I'm not sure what DSB is. Do you guys know? DSP? DSB. Delta Sierra Bravo. Uh, I don't I, know, I you got to elaborate on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But then Dave says hit it with a hammer. I was a little worried about hitting the frozen fish with a hammer, okay? I, I was scared I slap him on the floor. Don't call Peta. If I see one that's really bad, I, I drop a tear. I slap him on the floor, and I bury I actually buried him. Like, I'll put vegetables out in the uh, spring. Oh, deep sand bed. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Now I so got it. That, oh. one's, that one's actually an easy one to answer. Um... That was the trend for a while. These yeah. Things. So they're great. They are you're great. Looking at getting the different types of bacteria and having it, um, you know, be a little bit more self-sufficient. But at the same time, uh, you have to worry about it turning into a litter box and you've still got to maintain it. But when you're maintaining it, you've got to be careful not to be sticking your gravel vac down in too far. Uh, like there's just, there's a lot of variables and stuff that get into that. And I wouldn't suggest a deep sand bed to, Anybody, let alone anybody that doesn't have any experience. What do you yeah. say, Ryan? I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. I like I like running deep sand beds, but you got to keep it clean. You got to keep it clean. I have a crew and guys that turn over the soil and filter the soil. And I'm talking fresh water. <laughs> You're converting. Yeah. <laughs> filter the sand, but yeah. You got some good points, Sean. Well, that's a good point, too. Like, Ryan's got animals that yeah, are disturbing the sand bed, so they're constantly keeping it from compacting. Like, sand, you have a yeah. deep sand bed, it can turn into concrete, depending on the kind of sand you got. Yeah, because that was my first mistake. It's always getting turned over, and I, I don't touch my sand. I don't vacuum it. I don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. but the thing is, is how much of it is getting turned over. So if you're running a six-inch bed, I promise you, your cleanup crew is not going down six inches. Yeah, but you also have living bacteria that 
recycle your water in the sand bed because they come to the sand bed comes to life more or less. I got lots of sand sets and gobies and all kinds of stuff. Like they're getting huge these things and they're doing their job. My yeah, sand. They're, they're doing with the first what eighth inch of sand though. Well, there's a no, they go down. They go down, Sean. Starfish, I, you know, they got starfish that go in and they turn it over. They eat. They eat the bacteria. All kinds of stuff. But I have I, your sand, Ryan. In certain areas, four inches. Some areas don't even have any sand. At night, my clownfish actually dug the sand. Not the clownfish. My uh, goby. My daughter had picked out a goby when she was like three. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie dug down so far that I was seeing light coming out of my sump, and I was like, "What the hell is this light?" It was the moonlights. Okay, show my time. The moonlights that I had on the tank. He dug down to the glass. So the people, a lot of people, put their rock in before the sand, just because of the fact that those gobies will dig under it and topple it over. Oh yeah, same thing. I always put my rock down first. Then they can't go underneath the rocks and disturb it and cause a catastrophe. A plenum. Now, how do you do a plenum under a deep sand bed? I don't think you could do it. I that. that that used to be the uh, under gravel filter. Keep that back. Hey. Well, plus, yeah, like you keep it one to two inches. If you have rasses, you ever see a ras sleep on the bottom of a glass before? <laughs> well, we used to have the. Uh, crushed coral when we first did the salt uh the salt hobby we started with crush i don't see too many people use crushed coral anymore but no. we had under gravel filters and and crushed coral and you could do a deep sand bed but overall you found out that that was really a pain in the neck <laughs> it really was a pain in the neck For sure. but the good thing about the crushed coral is you got the amphipods and copepods could go in the coral they can't go into the sand like they do in the crushed coral and they yeah. used to live in the tank all you had to do was stir up a little area, and you'd see them come up. Yep. Yeah, and, and if you have lots of rasses in your tank, they love to dig it and sleep, right? Yeah. They make kind of a mess. But they're, they're turning over the sand, though. That's great. I, I have this little tiny yellow chorus ras in my tank now. That thing is awesome. I love they're that awesome. fish. I have one, too. They're wicked. That's one <laughs> of my favorite fish. He's as long I, as my tank now. Jeez. They're awesome when they when they get mature and their facial markings. They're pretty sweet, man. So I was just sitting there watching TV last night, and I just happened to look over my tank because I was it just the yellow like caught the light just right and caught my eye. I look at it and watch that little bugger just zip right down into the sand, and I was like, "Well, guess it's bedtime." <laughs> but dang, exactly. cloud. I mean, I was like, "Jerk." I wanted a leopard rasp, but I just had no luck in keeping them. I don't know if either it jumped out or, man, to see them dip in the sand was awesome. But then he never came out. <laughs> he come out at night, and I'd never see it. And then he just kind of disappeared. Robert Corbin's got another one. The DBS is raised to the bottom with egg crate. Did I grab the right one? Okay, this is the one here. How do you keep it without sand? Keeping the algae. I don't have sand in the twenty, and um, what happens in a sandless tank is if you let the crap accumulate in the bottom, you have to. You have to remove it, either vacuum it or keep the pumps where they move that down. Now, I did that a couple of months ago. I put a power head trying something new. I put a power head on the vacuum to kind of push it, and it kicked all that gook into the tank. And now yep. I have rock that I call my algae rock out. <laughs> it, it, it created a nutrient nightmare. So keeping that that tank clean is you got to have circulation and flow down there man you got to keep that tank vacuumed and keep it flowing i vacuum it every week oh you really I, do it, I vacuum it into the filter sock and then i change the filter yeah. sock see I don't, I don't do anything like, with, like when i have sand i don't have to do any of that Let's see <laughs> man all these questions about sand tonight <laughs> i know what's the best is <laughs> okay here's a question what's better uh Fine sand or coarse sand? Depends on what you're keeping. I like I like a fine coarse sand. Well, if it's too if it's too uh, fine, it blows around the tank like crazy. Yeah, like that Fiji pink. Like it looks good, but it goes everywhere. <laughs> like so when you're running SPS tank, you know crack. Mark, here's Mark. Hey, Mark, how's it going tonight, buddy? Uh, on the topic of the sand bed, best way to keep it. 
proper. If you have fish inverts, crustaceans, that will dig and turn over the sand regularly. That's a natural way. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's all I do. I and don't even get my serpent star. Even a serpent star yeah. moves stuff around like nobody's business. And my, my yeah. serpent star is huge. Exactly. I haven't got all creative like reef dudes and made like some real kind of contraption, you know, something to do. Yeah, well, what's the point? That yeah. our whole, the whole yeah. point is to create nature, right? Create nature. Yeah. Keep it simple. Right, D? Kiss, kiss method. You know, my steelo. That's a true. If you have a gyro, that'll definitely help too, right? Because it. Yeah, the gyres will actually move like a sheet of water across the bottom and kick all that stuff up. Yeah, uh, it definitely helps. Yeah, I had to turn that gyre down. Actually, I love that gyre, but it's it's strong, man. It's moving. I was noticing corals not opening, like it was pushing water that wasn't moving before. All of a sudden, things weren't opening. <laughs> you can. The good thing is you can turn them down. But yeah, that'll stir up the bottom real good. It's funny, Robert's like he gets started back up 15 year hiatus. Man, things have changed. Welcome yeah. back, Rob. So you know my you know the pain. Yeah. These guys are ribbing me all the time, Rob. I need you in my corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things are changing. I find it's changing every year, like more drastically. Well, it's oh, beautiful yeah. because you got so much technology and yeah. not even the technology, the science. Like yeah. things we weren't testing for that now we know how to test for. Yeah, like like the master tronic that's coming out. People product. keep, keep what's that? <laughs> Is it product drop? Product. Yeah, yeah. Don't what worry, about, guys. What We're about gonna have that, show. What about that Detronic they're coming out with? Oh, the Detronic. That one's that one's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the Detronic. <laughs> Now I think it is awesome. I try to keep up with all of the equipment and and how to apply it because a lot of people fall out of the hobby for the wrong reasons. If you go in good with your feet on the ground running with all the information and knowing what you're going to put into the tank, you'll do well. If you know you're not going to test, then by all means, get something that will test for you and then you don't have to worry about screwing it up. <laughs> you know, if you're not going to change water, by all means, set up an auto water change system. Now we have auto dosers and, and controllers that are capable of making it so much easier. Yeah. The only thing that sucks about going that automated route, though, is the money. Okay. Yeah, so let's cheap. say, well, let's say the Mastertronic comes out at 1300 bucks. Okay. You're 1300 for the Mastertronic, you're 1200 for the Alcatronic, and you're 850 or whatever for the Dosetronic. So you're just over what? Uh, 3400 bucks roughly to buy it all like that's a lot of money to be lazy i'm just well, saying can you can you run one you without the, the other you gotta get the lighting too man what do you got the lighting oh the solar tronic solar uh, tronic <laughs> no it's a legit thing it's, it's legit it's coming to it's, it'll probably be at the same time as the master tronic i think I, i'm all for it but i'm not all for that 1300 a light price tag so I'm going I'm to wait and see a little bit more testing on this because I want to see par per distribution spread. You know, I want to see all of these things for it that we just don't have access to before I can even think about justifying that. Because it's like, why would I buy a light that has some really cool science? Like, uh, you know, it follows the movements of the sun. So it'll adjust the way that the light's going. If you have it paired with a Mastertronic and your nutrients and stuff are up, it'll raise the lighting. If it's down, exactly. it'll reduce the lighting. Like it's got a bunch of really cool features. But why am I gonna pay thirteen hundred dollars for one light when I can go pay sixteen hundred and get two XR thirties that are gonna cover twice the space? So I mean, well, if you if you say that, if you say that, then you're saying why would I get an XR thirty when I can get a LED for a hundred dollars that lights the tank? I yeah, mean, it depends on what are you keeping in the tank. Well, what are you keeping in the tank? I mean, uh, Ryan Ryan by trade built a light. Now, he can probably tell you more about a light than an average guy on the street that just says, I'm going to buy Radeon. And Radeon is awesome because you can push a button and have it dial in the way it needs to be dialed in. Now, I'm Joe Blow putting a, you know, putting a saltwater tank together. Does it make sense for me to spend X amount on that if I don't know? I have more complaints from people that don't know what settings to put on a light when they buy it because they just bought it because it's the thing now yep. they ask what set like they say what settings do you use d i says well i got 
12 tanks. What are you growing or what are you doing? But if they buy something strictly for the price tag, you're going to make mistakes, both in the expensive end and in the cheap end. Yep. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, it's like, you know, you're going to do what you pay for. I'm not saying that the technology isn't amazing. I'm not saying that it's not beneficial. I'm just saying that I can't justify that expense right now with the information at hand. But if you get if you get a 40 gallon breeder and get two radions, right, or one radion, whatever you want to put on it, and you get a acro, that acro can grow in a month's time, a week's time, or whatever, based on all the parameters, and that could basically pay for the light that you just bought. Yeah, true. It's true. You know, if you're going with something high end and harder to get, absolutely. What a Mastertronic, like the Mastertronic, and and these and these pieces of equipment are geared for people that are trying to grow coral. Those mm -hmm. coral will pay for the device in time. True. Yeah. Well, that's exactly why I'm getting it. I mean, my my fish tank is essentially my retirement plan. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> it's really not, but I like to tell people that. That's why I need an auto water change system because I should be retired now. I'm too old to be moving water, <laughs> by all means. Here you go. Uh, uh, hydro. That's, that's, why, that's why I put this up and was being a smart here. <laughs> You're on the hydros team, are you? <laughs> I'm just saying. I am going to put a controller on multiple tanks, and it's looking like it's going to be the hydros. I'm going to take yeah. you guys for the ride. You know I'm going to test it because I'm 100% transparent. And I want freshwater people to know that the same work that you put in a saltwater tank, you should and can put into a freshwater tank, and it will change the results. You want improved results. You got to put the work in. Yep, exactly. I'm following right behind you, D. So here, here's my argument, because um, Alice is coming back saying Apex and everything. Sure, Apex is great if you want to pay a boatload of money for a raspberry pie. I mean, <laughs> oh, okay. damn. <laughs> and, and then if you want to pay a boatload of money for all of the attachments to put onto it and everything, I mean, it, it, it's one of these brand loyalty runs really, really strong. I'm not saying that the Apex is garbage, because it's not. It's tried, it's proven, it does its job. Um, it's not entirely user friendly they've gone some massive steps and made it a little bit more user friendly but when you start looking into peripherals and actually building bigger systems and monitoring more stuff and everything it's just cost wise not worth it you know um like dosing stuff for instance okay so with the hydros line they're going to be coming up with the cables to connect up the kamoa dosers so with that being said it's going to do all the same stuff that the apex does with the dose but it's going to be way cheaper so it just depends i mean initial cost wise you're probably going to be about the same between them but long term wise the hydros is just going to be better cost wise <laughs> apex I running hydro stuff <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to have everything running i'm going to have google home running i'm going to have apex running i'm going to have hydros running compare the setup so that you guys know it's an unbiased comparison controllers are awesome but if you don't know how to set it up it can be bad and that's like anything if you don't know how to drive and you buy a mercedes and crash it do you blame mercedes no yes. <laughs> well they're both, the cars are too smart they're self they are cars are too smart now we had the snowstorm last week I saw more new cars crash than old cars because they have the auto braking and the auto braking can send you in a tailspin. I never thought about it until that snowstorm. It yeah, was all the new cars. Yeah, the way it fluctuates and everything, absolutely. It'll um, stop. So Sydney's bringing up some points. Uh, you're false though. I'm, I'm calling that myth uh, as false, Sydney. Controllers are not cheap by any means. That's a lot of money when you look at what it costs to gain automation for your system, regardless of whether it's a Felix or an Apex or a Hydros or an E Coral or any of the other stuff. Like there's nothing cheap about it. They're all pricey. Um, but yes, it definitely does depend on what you want to do with it and what the peripherals are and stuff and how you're going to use it. Like there's too many variables. Um, and realistically, the sad thing is, is at this point in time, there's there's too many controllers on the market now that are too new to really be able to to do a fair comparison across the board with them. So a lot of it really just does come down to what looks prettier for you, what's going to be easier for you to maintain or program. I'm just saying. 
And yeah, Battle is over there saying DeWalt versus Milwaukee tool. <laughs> I mean, and that's kind of what it is. <laughs> job. It's just what name do you want to back? And 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 for all of you guys out there that were wondering, freshwater, saltwater, reef equipment, it is worth it now to invest in a controller yeah. from the beginning only because it's going to take some of the guesswork out of what you're going to have to do on your own and put it right there in front of you. You want to know your pH is going to tell you your pH. So it can alleviate a lot of problems and mishaps. All of a sudden, people end up with dead fish and they go to the store with the water like, hey, my fish are dead. Here's the water. Whereas if you had a controller, it could show you right on your phone or it can send you an alarm. Oh, your pH is dropping or, or, yeah. or spiking. So it yeah. is worth it. Even, even, to have, even to have a monitor, like a pH monitor, there are a lot of devices to make your life easier. Yep. Well, I'm always running my calcium reactor and stuff, right? It's it's great having that control of the pH and it makes it makes it just makes reading so much easier. It's like you said, being at work, be able to check it or if you're on vacation. Yeah. So <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> God, if I could talk here. Um, we're getting a bunch of comments here. Uh, Alice, 3,500 on a Trident dose. That seems really, 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 really high. high. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 800 bucks for a Trident? It, he must have bought four of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, what the dose for? The dose is about three, 340? Let's and see. The tank. He must be oh, Oh, here's Robert's question on whether or not you can grow acros in the long run without a controller. Uh, absolutely. I mean, people have been doing it for years and years and years. You absolutely can. But it's, again, a matter of picking your struggle. It's just easier with a controller. It allows you to automate. It allows you to monitor remotely. It's just easier. But, yeah, you can do it absolutely without one. You don't need a controller. It's just it's nice and any more with the availability advisable. We got Mark here. Which vendor would... Vendor, will you provide the best support? Ooh, so I'm going to sit my lips. That, that's a good point. Um, you know, you can buy a, a really nice controller that's going to do everything you want it to do. But if you have a problem and their customer service is just garbage, yeah. then it makes it more of a nightmare. I mean, I would rather buy something that's subpar. And if it breaks, I'm going to have great customer service and they're going to fix the problem and everything instead of me having to jump through all the hoops. So on yeah. that one alone, I mean, personal bias here, uh, I would say that I would definitely go with the Hydros just because I've dealt with customer service with them. And every time I've had a problem, it's just been like that. I mean, I had Carlos working on my wave engine when I first set it up on a Sunday. So I'm just saying now it's not a normal thing, but that kind of customer service goes a long way in my book. That is awesome. But I will go as far as to say that um, in the Apex defense, and I'm being I'm being control and neutral, um, support when you've been out 10 years is different than support when you just come out because you have way more users to support. I've had bad experiences with Apex uh, support, which has improved greatly over years. But once again, they have all these forums for support. And, and just because of longevity, there's more people out there that have experienced the problems. And sometimes they answer the questions quicker than, you know, than even contacting the person direct, like just general things that people have noticed by having it set up in so many different configurations. Yep. But yes, Hydros has been really on top of support. And I'm happy yep. about that because coming out the gate, they're showing us that, yes, they come out with a product. They've supported it. Um, I've spoken yep. to them. I've gone on all the streams and seen that people have had issues and they've corrected them. They've even built on to the platform in the last few weeks that have improved things from the date of introduction to now. So they are, they're doing a wonderful job, man. I have to applaud them on that. Plus, they got the, the Facebook group now too, as well. If you end up getting one and you want to learn or you know help with programming or anything like that, and just join in and see how everybody's doing. Check that out on Facebook. There, uh, what is it called? The uh, the official Hydros yeah. group or something. The official yep. Coral View Hydros. Yeah, you can see people getting controllers and learning about it, or you know, if you're having a problem, you can ask guys, "Hey, you know, what do I need to do this?" People will help you out. Pretty friendly. I wonder if they got something going on Reef to Reef. Sooner or later, I'll go with a Reef to Reef group. I know these guys are always jumping and creating 50,000 groups on there. They drive me nuts with the updates. On Reef to Reef? 
Oh man, I was getting so many updates. My ba- my phone battery was running out before the afternoon. I don't even go on there anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's so I, crazy. I I have never been a forums guy. They just it, they're so hard to navigate. Deal with it's everything. Too cum- it becomes too cumbersome. Yeah. Uh, so Alice made the point though, or asked an interesting question. With today's technology, why can't they get a controller that actually does what it's supposed to and is user friendly? So I'm gonna tell you. Right now, from my use with the Hydros, yes, there a, was a couple of things. Now, I had it before the update when I set it up. The update has made things a little bit easier. Um, before that, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt kind of figuring out the order of operations because they don't really include an instruction manual. But uh, I found it to be pretty intuitive and actually really easy to set up. And it does absolutely everything that they say that it will do. So I don't know if there's really a response on that one. I mean, yes, you can get into some more of the advanced stuff that's a little bit harder. Um, you could look for something that's kind of random and off the shelf that hasn't been thought of or addressed to them yet that you might not be able to do. But for your basic generalized stuff, um, it'll do everything that it says it's supposed to do and do it pretty easy. Dude, you can get a smart outlet. If you're looking really, really basic, you can get a smart outlet to turn lights on and off. I mean, a lot of people that talk about control and support and things like that it depends on what you want too because i think sometimes you buy things with the wrong expectation and then you're looking for the company to try to resolve it and that's not fair to any of the companies because um there's a lot of forums there's a lot of groups all of the companies pretty much have you know a, a, a similar a similar goal is they want you to use the product they want you to be successful so it's not ever fair to go on and you didn't look at it you don't know what you're doing you don't know anything about the controller you just take it out the box and say it doesn't work without even trying to set it up so uh, whatever you do take the time to research it and know what it does and make sure that you're getting the right thing for you yep you know so Ophel says hydrus is made in the u.s apex is made in china it's like hiring, it's like hiring a uni electrician and some rats. Woo! That hits you with personal right? No, I, I see. I'm, that a, I'm a union electrician. I'm a union electrician. I'm a uni guy, but I've seen I've seen that rat. I used to be management. I seen that rat come on the, <laughs> on the work site. Oh, it's man. awesome yeah. though. So Matt's asking a question here about what the Alcatron or what the Hydro will support as far as testing. Um, right now, it's just the Alcatronic. However, there is the ABEX and the Zepta that are in work. We'll see if those ever actually hit the market. Um, they've run into some issues. Hopefully it does. They're cool products. Uh, a little bit more cost effective with their price point that they're going for, but that'll have integration if that comes out. Um, the Mastertronic is, rumor has it, going to be released within the next couple of weeks. Yep. So that's going to eventually have integration. So that's going to yeah. do your PO4, your NO3. Uh, yeah, Cal- I heard about that. Museum. It'll do alkalinity once a day, and then it'll do that new test thing that I can't remember what the heck they're calling it, um, the organic one. Um, it'll do all that stuff, and that'll all be integrated. Uh, not necessarily right off the rip, but there will be an update, I guarantee, that'll come out and do it. Um, so you're going to get all that. But right now, it's got the Alcatronic integration, which is fantastic. I love it. Oh, how is that new update? Uh, you used the uh, the new download last week? Yeah, it didn't really change anything for me. Um, no. because setting up new stuff i think that a lot of the stuff that it changed was for when you were setting up new stuff if i went back and reset my controller for instance and wanted to redo everything then yeah it'd probably make a difference but didn't really do anything for me and i agree with battle and i agree with mark g fair i hope no company kills anybody i hope they all create a fair market with all these guys creating controllers i our goal is that the cost becomes more attainable to the average everyday user because competition usually creates better costs of point. So I hope they all do well and I hope they have all different cost points and then make a better hobby. Um, yeah, and let's go into the comments. Dude, about GHL stuff? I love GHL stuff. It's so pretty. Like from a look standpoint, it is so pretty. And yeah functions flawlessly from what I've heard as long as you have a degree in programming and programming. Yeah. Right. I, I went to school of programming and it definitely took me back to my college days. I was a little intimidated. <laughs> I got to tell you, but it's, it's, it's definitely geared for somebody that's ready to write their own code and completely open-ended. So mm-hmm. yeah, cool. Oh, we got a local union here. <laughs> yeah. Local union in the house. Yeah, I know. Right? So 
Are we going back on the myth stuff, or are we going to? Uh, do we have any? Do we have any more questions in the archive that we were going to throw out there? Yeah, got almost an hour and a half in here now, guys. Woo. Okay, my favorite myth. My my favorite myth here. Uh, okay, second favorite. Lied. I actually have one good one for towards the end here. Uh, first one though. Uh, using your wave makers on pulse mode will blow the seams of your tank. Uh, I don't agree with you must that. Have a, you must have a cheaply built tank. <laughs> right. I know Wait. people that make their people make their own tanks if it's not braced right, because I saw a lot of people trying to make rimless tanks and a lot of people taking the rim off of tanks and they end yep. up with blowouts because those tanks are made with a rim for a reason. <laughs> yep. Euro bracing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't agree, unless it's your tanks, you know, not made very well. I don't know at that point. I guess the logic behind it is the pulse is like kind of pushing and releasing the pressure. So it's kind of like wobbling. I mean, is you take it, a metal and you do this number with it long enough, eventually it's going to break. Right. So I guess that's kind of the logic. But is realistically, it huh? Is there that much pulse to it, you think? There should yeah, be. Some, of those tanks, some tanks have heavy pulse, man. Yeah, if, you put, if you put two, three gyres on one side of a tank, that thing threw water onto my floor the first day I turned it on. And my tank's not that big. But I was surprised. So thank God I didn't have two of them on. But if you got a tank that's already weak in the seams, and I've seen some manufacturers, which I'm not going to name, there are some issues with Boeing in that tank before we even talk about pulsing. So. If you add pulsing to the mix, I could see that adding a little force to the cake. I guess. So then is it myth or fact? Or would that be kind of in the middle, like a possibility, but again, situational? I think it's a myth. It's a myth. <laughs> I think there's other problems other than the pulse mode that's doing it. I don't think it's actually the pulse mode that's doing it. Hmm. What, so what's your second myth, what's your second myth uh, Sean? Uh, the, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the second one, like a big one here, is that myth, <laughs> they're not myth, but um, specially named corals are worth the money. No, I think that's full of crap. Yeah. First of all, these guys are taking stuff from the ocean and giving it a name. They're horse crap. You're paying for the color. Yeah, and you don't even know. Oh, I... Just like you can have a white colored yellow tang, that's a mutation. Did that mean it's a completely different species? No, it's still the same fish, it's just a different color. Yeah, you're talking about like Casper from WWC. Yeah, it's still a yellow tang, but he's a mutation. But yeah, yeah you're gonna pay for it because he's it's white. Branded. He's branded now. Mm -hmm. right? He slapped the name on it. Yeah. How, how about if you're an influencer and you're selling gear, should you? Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like you need to expand on that. If, if you're only advertising gear but don't have a tank. Yeah, you don't read. So how do you be how are you be supposed to be taken seriously? No. Okay, so, so, if, so if you're an influencer and you don't have a tank, how do you have the balls to say something is good if you haven't yeah. used it? It's like having a controller. Oh, that controller is so amazing. Can't wait to you know run one. But you're selling them. And you're selling it, and you haven't even set it up. Right. And you're knocking somebody else's. Yeah, is that a myth or a fact? I mean. <laughs> well, is it, is it a myth that it's happening? Hell no, because a lot of people out there selling horse crap, and they don't even have the time in the hobby. Well, exactly. Exactly. And it's good people's money, you know. Like, I hate that, know. actually. I, yeah. I hate I hate that with a uh, uh, with a passion because you get people to spend money that they really don't have. We got we got people out there selling art to pay pay for stuff they don't even know is going to work. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I mean, in the current economic climate worldwide, like you've got to be a little more careful with what you're spending your money on. That yeah. disposable income is getting tight for everybody now. So, to like, be put on my tank if it don't work, it's not good. You know what I mean? It's got to work. If it's not going to work. I'm not going to put it. On my tank at home. These are my babies. You know what I mean? Oh, I yep. tell you, I tell you, I t I've been testing this tank, this this camera, Ryan. How many weeks now? I know. I won't, even, I won't even mention a name, and I love it. But until I've seen it kick every aspect, I won't promote it because yeah. you know it's not fair 
to the people out there that buy it and then they, hey, D, this thing sucks or so, or they have a problem, you know, I got to believe in it myself before I sell it to the next man. Good man. All right. So myth that if you smell the salt water for a long time, you get high. Uh, I've <laughs> never heard that. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. I, I almost want to go like huff my tank just to find out, but I don't believe that that's correct. Yeah. It's not like bath salts, right? Is that even real bath salts? I don't even know. Well, bath salts are a mixture. If you put bath salts in your tank, you I could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> although, although, although Epsom salt, Epsom salt is <laughs> magnesium. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with fact. Sorry, he didn't mean to get you off on the Epsom salt stuff. Yeah, no, you're right. Fact on what? <laughs> Ryan is going to get a stingray. Oh, freaking stingray. Fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. I don't think so. I wouldn't be betting. No, I wouldn't be betting a million dollars. I think. I think he. He's now. He's too stubborn that you said he's going to do it. That he's definitely not going to do it. Hey, Ryan. Ryan. I will he's bet you a million dollars that you get a stingray. He'll get a freshwater stingray, just to, not to get a saltwater one now. Yeah, but if he gets a stingray, he's got to pay me a million dollars. Oh uh, nah. I'll take Canadian. <laughs> we don't have to worry about the exchange rate. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Wait, because I'll send him going stingray. <laughs> so Brian Garcia, he must have he was on Facebook, couldn't see his name, but now he's back. I hope you all can see this now. What are your thoughts on nitrate reactors? I've never used one. So what's a nitrate reactor? I can't get nitrate. I have to dose it. <laughs> a nitrate reactor is another one of those things that have come into the hobby yeah. strong and then come out of the hobby just because people don't know how to apply it. That's somebody that came into the hobby, introduced something. And, you know, in theory, I can sell you the farm if I make you believe in it. But what's the point of a nitrate reactor? What can you do in a nitrate reactor that you can't do in your sump? Or for that matter, put a canister filter on your tank. I, or, I, have, or, I, have, or, one or, I have a Delta one here and you, you end up, it's full of sponges in, in a mesh. So you grow a bacteria in it, but you have to dose it and feed this bacteria. It's 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 very complicated. Yeah, and 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 that's the problem. You know, it becomes more complicated. Now mm -hmm. you you've created more work for yourself that yeah. you could put into doing something in the tank without the nitrate. Yes, I talk, I, I talked to David Saxby before about it because he runs one on his tank, and he says it's it's very complicated and a very big pain in the ass to do it, and you got to do it right. Yeah. And even, uh, even I mean, no. <laughs> his tank is awesome. He's had some I know. tanks, man. He's yeah. in the UK, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Candles Reef brings up the ultimate myth. I'm telling you, this one has stood the test of time. Um, the myth is that peeing in your tank will start a cycle. Um, I think that that's kind of poorly worded there. If you pee in your tank after it's been running, no, it's not going to start a cycle. It's just disgusting at that point. <laughs> the, <laughs> the ammonia, the ammonia in your urine. Yeah, but it won't start a and cycle. What else, and what else is in your, what else? I know for a fact I got macaroni and cheese I had last night in my urine. I want to put that in my tank. <laughs> or, maybe, or maybe I had the, uh, maybe I had your the fire. Your urine is sterile though. Your urine is sterile. Well, not if I drank Fireball a half hour ago. <laughs> That's perfect. Then you're carbon dosing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I could carbon dose and, and, and ammonia dose at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. Kill two birds with one stone. Um, yeah. No, but back in the day, though, with fresh tanks, when people had, um, you know, dry rock that they had pulled out of tanks or whatnot and wanted to start another tank and everything, peeing in your tank was actually really common. It was an ammonia source and it started the cycle. Hair algae was very common, too, though. Yes. Am I, am I going to smell pee in my house? I'll pass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why don't you take a dump in your tank while you're at it? <laughs> I'm surprised somebody's out there doing that right now. I'm going to dose my tank. Oh, God, help you if you had asparagus and then pee. That's a valid point, too. Yeah. You guys you guys have some great questions. I don't even know if we got to the questions that we were going to ask because you guys have so many good questions out here. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm surprised how many there are. Hey, uh, <laughs> you just put up that Calypra is a good thing. Calypra is a good thing if you have a rabbit fish. Let it go sexual and breed everywhere. It don't matter. That rabbit fish is going to eat it right up. I had some Calypra in my tank. Keyword, had. It's gone. 
Yeah, they eat it, man. And what they don't eat, oh man, my sea urchin eats, thank God, because he will rip the coralline off the rock down to it. Looks like I just bought it. <laughs> they are great at cleaning rock, boy. Yes, sir. I guess that would explain why I don't really have coralline. I have three yeah. urchins in my tank right now. Oh, if you got three, <laughs> they'll, they'll eat coralline before they eat hair algae. I'll, I've seen it. Like, I've seen them go after purple coralline and leave the hair until it was gone. <laughs> right? See, I, I got them to help get rid of my ulva and had them in there for, God, a month and a half. They would not touch the ulva. They'd pick it up and carry it around, but they wouldn't need it. Um, I put a fox face, I put an orange shoulder fox or orange spot fox face in my tank. It taught my tangs how to eat the ulva, and now I have no more ulva in my tank. I'm super excited about it. Well, I want to move my urchin from the cube to this this nano just to get rid of that one rock with algae. But I'm scared they're going to move my frags off the plug like they did in the cube. <laughs> they're great at moving those frag plugs. They're really lost some nice. Co I lost a few zoas that were on the plugs because this damn yeah. urchin. I stayed a couple of mice urchins. They're pissing me off and put them in my uh, in my sump. They hang out there and eat. So. so Robert, it's still on the DSB thing, though. I know. <laughs> but yes, that is true. It is a good nitrate reactor. Yeah. That's in a way of putting it. That's funny. Set it and forget it. Tanks exit. What? <laughs> set it and forget it. Famous last words. I wish I could set it and forget it. Wouldn't that be nice? But then again, that's no fun. Half of the hobby is like putting well, a frag in there. Like Ryan building that light, seeing that plant grow, like that's what gives yeah, me fulfillment. That. Exactly. Like, that's that's like the 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 whole point of building a tank is to see it grow. Well, my six hundred, I have everything automated on there. I literally some days are like, what can I do? Like literally, I guess have a coffee and watch it. You know, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I got everything running on. It's all automated. Water changes, everything. Must be nice. <laughs> well, that's what I, I was, you know, what is, striving to get to that point. You know, it's nice, but sometimes I just sit in my room, like, should I just test some water here? You know what I mean? Like, I still test my water every week, just just to make sure everything is running on par. And well, you need I, to do that regardless, even with automation, things mess up. You know, the yeah, yeah. closer stretches yeah. over time. I double um, check my pH, my pH uh, probes to make sure you know, put my calcium reactor in my tank. You know, you got your pH probe on your Alcatronic. Make sure everything's on check, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. people. Check, calibrate your pH probes. I yeah. was running mine for a long time before. I just this year replaced it like a dummy. But yeah. I was running around doing everything instead of just changing the pH probe, you know. But this is, a, is Dr. Tim's just bottled up urine from Dr. Tim? <laughs> if it is, he, he earned that money. <laughs> if he sold pee in a bottle all these years, congratulations, Dr. Tim. He, he That's a good one for you. He called the D a urine. Oh, man, that would be, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> it went open in the tank. <laughs> hey, can I have two bottles of that urine up there? How much is that? Twelve ninety nine. Okay. No, it is not urine, and no, it's not urine. <laughs> I would love to be next to my tank with a coffee. Do it, <laughs> do it, do it. Get a get a Mister Coffee. Put a timer on it and put it next to your tank. Exactly. Join Patty's little uh, coffee group. I I do that, and then I want to cry because I look at my tank and I'm just like, God, I'm dealing with this cyano. I'm dealing with this dino. It's like I've got so much going on because I neglected the hell out of my tank so bad. Oh, word of advice, guys. Don't neglect your tank. You know, that, that whole ounce of prevention is where the pounding cure is 100% yeah. true because it's a friggin' nightmare. Well, it's usually like yeah, up here yeah. in Canada, a lot of people in the summer, they neglect their tanks, and then winter comes, they're like, back on, you know what I mean? We're going to get it all fixed back up. But if they would have kept maintaining it, like over, like I call myself a 24 7 reefer, where I, it doesn't matter if it's winter or summer, I'm always doing my tank. I yeah. definitely, I definitely lose time in the summer because when I go into pond mode, like the first spring, yeah. like setting up the pond and getting it going, definitely takes a little bit of energy out of the inside tanks. So I'm, I'm yep. guilty of that. But if you want to keep the other tanks successful and keep, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I'm invested in controllers. Yeah, you know, it, because I can do one thing and have something else monitor the other thing, so I'm not going nuts. 
And yeah. for people out there struggling with their tanks, be advised right now, it's economically tough for a lot of people to get into the tanks. Some people have fallen out of the hobby. I got a lot of people calling the club, you know, calling the Brooklyn Aquarium Society, donating and, and getting out because they didn't set up the tank to be self-sufficient in the beginning. So now they're spending money on dosing or they're spending money on test kits or they're spending money. But if you had the tank set up, my tank's run in 20 years. It's gone through ups and downs, but it's never come down because yeah. it's set up to if times are tough. Oh, boy, I'm out there mixing that caulk washer. <laughs> if I can't afford whatever, whatever, I have plan B. I can run and, and keep the tank running. So be advised. Set up yep. the tank the right way the first time. Well, the turnover rate usually for in reef thing is about two years. Yeah. A lot of tanks come back to us. I get a lot of donations of tanks, especially saltwater tanks. Yep. People come yeah. into this hobby quickly. It's like usually two hour or two year turnover. Yeah. In the, in approximately two months, here we'll show you my hobby age here. In approximately two months, I will have been in the hobby for two years. Well, there you right. go. So I'm gonna beat that statistic, boys. Do it don't up. Be, don't be a statistic. Right. Uh, okay, Myth. There's a coral glue that actually works well. There's a bunch. The yeah. Polylab glue works really, really well. Um, it's all about the grenades. Yeah, the max spec glue that they just came out with works really well. Uh, here, I'll do a little shout out. Coral's Coral just released a line of glue. I'm waiting for it to come in. I'm going to get some. But uh, I've heard that it works pretty well, too. I mean, there's there's a bunch of glue out there that works really well. Polyp Lab who, is like... Who makes I, this? Yeah, Polyp Lab. Who makes that CA? Is that Bulk Reef? Oh, that just use Polyp Lab. works good. Do they make an accelerator, Polyp Lab? Mm hmm do they make a accelerator, a glue accelerator? It, it, it excels as soon as it touches water. Oh, okay. yeah, gonna, yeah, you know what the accelerator is? Your water. Yeah. No, because like, I this like this urchin, man. <laughs> it's like they know when I'm putting a frag in it and they go for it. Next, you know, I see the glue on the back and it's traveling around with the urchin. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks Rob. <laughs> I'm going to go get that polyp lab. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Try the polyp lab stuff. And it, it comes in the little grenades or whatever. And it works great. There's about like 20 in a bottle or more. And it's not that bad. It's like 15 bucks for like quite a bit of it. Can you use it underwater? Yeah, I use it underwater all the time. Because of the like whatever they call the pressure that's built up in it, it won't it won't, it won't come back out. Hydrogen. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's I don't want to end up I don't want to end up grenading my fingers with my luck. Yeah, it's very next, thick. Next too. show would be me with my hand stuck to my head like this. Freaking <laughs> glue on my head. <laughs> I have some right here. Robert said the accelerator is baking soda water. Are and you this, kidding? I believe him. That's a hey, thing yeah. right there. Oh, okay. How how many are in there? That's a good deal right there. There's got to be over 20 of them. Oh, that's I think good it, deal. I'm earning you for like 26 bucks or something. <clears throat> Bless you. Thank you. Baking soda and water, Rob. You just... You just learned me something there, my man. You just learned me something. Yeah, I didn't know that. Acceler. I know you use the baking soda to fix seams. I seen the inappropriate leap uh, reefer fix a leaking seam in his tank with the coral glue and the baking soda trick. So I know it does work. Okay, so the grenade that Ryan was just showing retails thirty nine ninety nine on Marine Depot, and it is twenty five four gram tubes. Oh, that's yeah. not bad. It says for saltwater and freshwater applications. Cool. Oh, was he Ryan? Freshwater. We told you you need that algae. Java moss. Is that what you call it? Or Java? I do use I do use the cyanocoagulate coral glue to glue my uh, plants to river rock. That's another trick I'll give you, Ryan. If you can yeah. go to Home Depot, get river rock, which is a nice size rock like this. You can glue your Anubias or other freshwater plants before burying them so that your fish won't dig yep. them up. That's okay. an old it's an old trick. If you well, get I'll hit you up on gluing day. Right? <laughs> Kim Cole, good glue. Phil gave me a bunch of magna. Yep, Phil's a good guy. Oh yeah, Phil hit me off. Yeah. That's right. I should have that matter of fact. That's a good point. He gave me some of that polyp lab glue. Yeah, you better dig it out, man. That was last year. Shoot. It's in my bag. A lot of that stuff I, I give to people too. Like when I come back from trips, I have bags of stuff that I give to goodies to yep. people that can't make the magma. 
Thanks, Kim, yeah. for reminding me. <laughs> I started this hobby in 1981. Chili Wills Reef. Man. Chili Wills. Chili Wills. I was born in 1982. <laughs> Hey, hey, Chili Wills, you're almost with me. I bought my, I got my first tank in '78. I inherited the family's tank, which was sitting. All my my job was just to clean the glass. <laughs> my mother bought this big, this big tank from our local uh, aquarium, but taking over my own tank was '82 or '81 that I bought my own tank. '82. Well, Ryan, we're officially significantly younger than D now. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we, we've been going here for an hour and 46 minutes. I know. Um, Great questions, man. Great questions, people. Definitely. Definitely. But I'm saying, because it's getting late, you know, even Robert's going to bed. I think it was Robert. Somebody said something. Um, we've been going forever here. So <laughs> All right. Let, let's call it for the night. Um but again, you know, real quick, guys, for all of you that are watching, thank you for the support. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you have anything that you want us to cover, be sure to let us know one way or another. There's a million different ways you can do it. Um, you, we don't, or we just kind of cover the stuff that we want to cover. But I mean, if you guys have something in particular, like I said, let us know. You know, we're always up to um, fixing that stuff. But for me, uh, you know, Beeves Reef. Um, happy new year, you know, guys, enjoy the holiday. We'll see you next year. Um, this has been a great year. We've got a lot of big things coming. Be sure to follow all of us. We'll keep you updated. Um, but other than that, I guess, you know, have a great and safe week and we'll see you next Saturday. Stay yeah. safe, support your local stores. They need you more than ever people. Exactly. All right, guys. So, well, thanks to all our viewers that jumped on tonight. Great, you know, lots of great uh, questions and everything. It's perfect. So I guess we'll see you guys all next Saturday, right? Is that the plan? Are we doing anything for New Year's or? Uh, well, we'll that in your eyes. People will find out as long as they're following us. Exactly. So make sure to subscribe to all our channels because you know all your support lets us do all these crazy things that we enjoy doing and fun content. So click that thumbs up so exactly. you know what we're going to do next because it always comes up in the preview. Smash that like button. I'm telling yep. you. <laughs> All right, guys. Have yourself a great night, and we'll see you guys on next Saturday. Be safe. We'll see you next week. Bye.